Hey everyone, Mike here with RC Four Wheel Drive. In part one of this two part video series, I painted this one tenth scale hard body set to resemble this cool picture I found on the internet. Now follow along in video part two and watch how I completely assemble and mount it to our Jelande 2 chassis kit. The first thing I like to do when building any kit is take a look at the assembly instructions and have all the parts and tools organized in advance. I also recommend using a tray like this one to keep track of all the screws and hardware. And just like when we were painting, we're starting out with the interior. Use the notes in the manual to see what hardware and supplies are needed to complete each step. And then use the pictures as reference to see how things go together. Use just enough adhesive to hold the parts together. I like to make sure I'm using the correct hardware, like this flathead cap screw that's made to sit flush inside this hinge. And careful not to over torque the screws into plastic. Make sure to test the magnets before gluing them in, that way your little compartment will stay closed. In step 4, I put all the stickers on the dashboard before installing the steering wheel. And in step 6, I put the decals on the lower part of the dash before installing it into the floorboard. I gotta say this came out pretty good. All the decals on the dash and the little magnetic compartment, pretty cool. Now we're ready to install the grill, headlights and vents. I always put the styrene glue away to prevent accidents. Look closely at step 11. Removing these burrs will make it easier for the headlight frames to snap into the main body. And cleaning up all the burrs off these small bezels makes it easier for the lenses to snap together. I put some clear adhesive around the lens holder to keep things in place. These headlight bezels are very delicate. I use sandpaper to remove the burrs. With the burrs removed from the headlight frames, they snap easily into place on the main body. And I use a dab of styrene glue to hold them in place. In step 13, you have to glue the marker lights together. I moved on to steps 14, 15, and 16 while I waited for the glue to dry. The engine vents are easy to snap in and just need a little styrene glue to hold them in place. When installing the hood, use the black plastic hinges, not the gray ones. Push the hinges into the holes in the main body, but do not glue them yet. And you may need to do a little sanding for things to fit. Before gluing the hinges in, install the grub screws and adjust the height of the hinges so that the hood closes and sits flush. Once it closes and sits flush, and use styrene glue to hold the hinges in place. I was careful not to get any glue on the exterior paint. Check the direction of the hood magnets and use clear adhesive to hold them in place. 
I use masking tape to hold the magnets in place and then tape the hood shut so I can keep working on the next steps. Now that the glue has had time to dry, we can jump back to step 13 and install the side marker lights. When assembling the doors, follow the steps closely and pay attention to the details. Look closely at the hinges on how they're angled and how the holes are drilled. There's a top and a bottom hinge. Use a little clear adhesive on the outside edge of the door panel. There aren't any screws to hold it in place. The screws for the hinges are very delicate. No need to over tighten them. I worked as carefully as possible when using styrene glue around the windows. You'll notice that this kit comes with two sets of mirrors. The hard plastic ones need to be assembled and the rubber ones are one piece, but they both mount on the door the same way. I use the hard plastic ones for this build. I used a hobby knife to clean out the holes in the body where the doors mount. Careful not to over tighten the door hinge screws and use a small backing nut on the lower hinge. Use clear adhesive for the inner door magnets and masking tape to hold everything together while it dries. Installing the rear tail lights can be a little tricky. Pre-tapping the holes and using a magnetic tool can help. All right, the tail lights are done. Let's pick up the pace and knock out some of the next few steps. I used a hobby knife to clean out the holes in the back of the cab to make the window trims and windows easier to install. Press the back of the cab in so it sits flush on the bed like this. Then use the screws to attach the roof.
Just a few more steps and we're done. We're going to install these little pegs in the bed and then put the tailgate on. Installing the tailgate is pretty straightforward. I only recommend using caution when installing the screws. Using the latches to hold the tailgate in place makes it easier to screw in the lower hinges. And thanks to the attention we gave the tailgate before we painted it, it fits perfect. Now let's install the interior and the front window and get this thing mounted on the chassis. When installing the front window assembly, I found it easiest to push in the top first and then snap in the lower corners. Alright, now that the body's all assembled, I'm going to set it aside to let the glue dry and install the mounts on the chassis. With the motor transmission and battery tray removed, install the mounts using these holes on the chassis. Now that the mounts are installed on the chassis, reattach the battery tray and reinstall the motor and transmission. Installing the body on the chassis is easy. Press these little tabs into the bumper and then use a couple of hex screws on the side rails to hold everything in place. Now that the glue has dried for a couple hours, we're ready to peel the tape and hit the trails. I gotta say all the hard work paid off because this thing looks great. Have fun everyone and drive it like you built it.